Sometimes what goes up must come down, including satellites orbiting the Earth and especially those satellites that are defective. Today I have a story for you about a Russian nuclear-powered satellite that re-entered Earth's atmosphere on the morning of the 24th of January 1978 while traveling on a northeastward track over western Canada. The satellite in question was the Cosmos 954. It was a reconnaissance satellite launched by the Soviet Union in 1977 aboard the Soviet Cyclone II orbital carrier rocket. It actually was kind of comparable to the Delta II rocket and operated for an impressive 40 plus years, beginning in the 60s up until its final flight in June 2006. The Cosmos 954 satellite was part of the Soviet Union's Rorsat program, consisting of 33 military reconnaissance satellites meant for spying on US Navy's vessels and submarines. Now, these satellites were launched during the Cold War between 1967 and 1988, and it was common practice to use a nuclear reactor to power the various instruments aboard. The satellites used radar to detect marine traffic, and because radar signals rapidly lose power with distance, the satellites had to be placed in low Earth orbit at an altitude of approximately 165 miles where there was a significant drag from air molecules. And it was precisely the air resistance that basically prohibited the use of large solar panels, leaving nuclear power as more or less the only alternative. The majority of the satellites carried nuclear reactors fueled by uranium-235. Because of space and weight constraints, the fuel was highly enriched to a weapons grade level so that the reactors were fast, efficient and small, not to mention extremely powerful. The reactor was mounted inside a separate unit that could be jettisoned further up into space into a higher orbit once the satellite reached the end of its operational life. This way the dead satellite could safely re-enter the Earth's atmosphere without the risk of radioactive contamination. But alas, in life, and especially in space, things don't always work out as planned. Even though the satellite was intended for a long-term on-orbit observation, not long after it arrived in space, Cosmos 954 already seemed to be doomed for failure since by December of 1977, merely two months after its launch, the satellite had deviated from its designated orbit and its flight path was becoming increasingly erratic as Soviet operators struggled to control their falling spacecraft. To make matters even worse, the system which was intended to dispose of the spent reactor core and shoot it away into a safe orbit failed. Its eventual re-entry was anticipated within the next few months, although the exact date would remain unclear until early January 1978, when it became certain that the satellite would re-enter Earth in a matter of weeks. By this time, the US had already been notified by the Soviets about this unfortunate event, as well as all the nations that lay directly under the flight path of Cosmos 954, Nor North American Airspace Defense Command, the organization that tracks all the satellites and debris orbiting in space had already begun tracking the flawed spacecraft as well. Acting on this information, the US National Security Council went on to place its nuclear emergency response capabilities on alert and also offered to help clean up any radioactive contamination that might result to its NATO partners. This helping hand would be readily accepted by Canada as on the 24th of January 1978, a few minutes before sunrise, the Soviet satellite Cosmos 954, which was carrying a nuclear reactor that contained around 50 kilograms or 110 pounds of uranium-235, entered the Earth's atmosphere and broke up over Canada. Debris from the satellite fell along a 600 km path from Great Slave Lake to Baker Lake, including portions of the Northwest Territories. On the same day, the American response team arrived in the neighboring country and reported to the Canadian forces for assistance in recovery efforts. Operation Morning Light had officially begun. A 500 mile long footprint pinpointing the area of fallen debris was identified and field crews began the monumental task of recovering every piece of debris they could see along the vast frozen area. Prior to its re-entering, Soviet counterparts had reassured that the satellite would completely burn up in the atmosphere 
However, out of the 4 to 5 metric tons that the satellite was believed to have weighed, about 65 kilograms of material was recovered, almost all of which was radioactive. This debris was located in four areas in the Northwest Territories, plates, discs, rods and other objects with radiation levels measuring from 1 to 200 Röntgen per hour were recovered. Approximately 100 radiological objects were collected. An immediate concern after the fall of Cosmos 954 was that a sufficiently large part of the core might have survived re-entry and crashed through the ice to become submerged in water where it might have become critical. But despite an extensive search, the core was never found. In a paper published in August 1984, the authors noted that at least a quarter of the reactor, about 7 to 8 kilograms, had fallen in form of fine particles less than 1 millimeter in diameter. These microparticles fell like an invisible slow fog on the Northwest Territories and the barren Arctic and subarctic land. The remaining three quarters evaporated into a fine mist and remained suspended in the atmosphere atmosphere for years before slowly descending to the Earth's surface. By this time, radioactive decay would have removed most of the shorter-lived radionuclides, posing little health risks. The subsequent search and cleanup operation cost Canada nearly 14 million Canadian dollars, although they ended up billing the Soviet Union only 6 million Canadian dollars, of which only half the amount was paid anyway. Cold War stories, I guess. And if you're looking for a fun pop culture fact, on the 28th of January 1978, a mere four days after the satellite's re-entry over Canada, the episode of Saturday Night Live featured a running gag about a radioactive debris from the crushed satellite having created giant mutant lobsters heading for the US East Coast. The story concluded with them invading the television studio at the end of the show. Mm -hmm.